Hello Internet, and you, it's me, Marianic90, with another topical video. Fighting game meters pop in and out faster than we mortals can count, and this applies to everyone's favorite MM fighting game, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Edition. The game is ever evolving and ever changing via its colorful cast of new DLC fighters. Not only are meters redefined by the DLC characters, but the very face of intellectual gaming power scaling community has been turned topsy-turvy by them. Take for example the recent trailer where this one anime guy called Sephiroth cut Smash Ultimate's main villain, Glenn Allen, in half. Not only instantly proving that he's a backstabbing bastard, but bare minimum S tier fighter, as well as strongest canonical Smash character to the date. That's right ladies and gentlemen. This is. Science. Allow me to unpack the fascinating facts and lore we can infer from these DLC hype pieces to accurately assess the power and feats of Nintendo characters. For example, as the first feat, Inklings are confirmed to be low tier right from the get-go, as they are intimidated by all the Smash characters being on fire. You've just been drafted into a war. <coughs> Woo me indeed. Alright, okay, maybe we can't make accurate assessments based on just that. Let's look at the next trailer. Already we are on better hands as we see the purple space bunny called Ridley casually defeat Megaman and Mario, like if he's some kind of purple space ninja. He then jump scares Samus and hits Link so hard that he explodes. For the record, this is very impressive feat considering that Link is omnipotent with the tree force, like they say. So Metroid characters scale above these three verses that have universal feats. To top that off, Little Mac in his base form is shown to be able to one-shot Samus, the same one that always kicks Ridley's ass. And he can't even beat a proper fighting game character, as Ken proved in his trailer. This Ken is then in turn shown to scale below all of Pokemon, as he lost to the fire fighting Garfield, who in generation 7 tier list isn't even an S tier. In the next instance, we see how Castlevania scales above Super Mario Bros. franchise as the fodder character of the verse Spooky Boy kills Luigi and proceeds to get his jaw dropped by Simon Belmont. So we can safely conclude that Mario, who can't have Ross without Luigi, scales below all of Castlevania. King DDD has a mine about with Donkey Kong's archenemy, King K. Drool, and is swiftly one-shotted, proving that he's below island level. This doesn't however apply to all of Kirby franchise, because, if you watch the critically acclaimed original Kirby visual novel, King DDD considers guns and explosives relevant weapons while trying to murder Kirby, while Kirby does not. It is safer to put DDD at building level and leave Kirby for later. I know. Buildings. That's pretty powerful. Right. Donkey Kong characters in turn are shown to be below Duck Hunt duo, whose speed is such that they seem to be beyond linear time as they can be present in multiple locations at the same time, but this too is just a flash in the pan, compared to Banjo and Kazooie, who beat them up and turn King K. Drool into a Looney Tunes hole of himself, burying his meter. Surprisingly, even annoying fodder characters are shown to be quite powerful in a Smash trailers. Piranha Plant is done jobbing to Mario's neutral bee, and proves that he's complete chad of a houseplant by slapping the shit out of every single Mario character, including the main man himself, which means that he's above dreamy Bowser, and deserves all the ladies instead. Next thing you know, Goomba will solo Mario verse, since everyone on this list seems to be able to do so, making Mario's scaling below minion level characters pretty consistent. This also includes all of Minecraft! As after Mario got punched across dimensions by Sonic, he is defeated by a creeper, proving that Steve, who scales to some text, is also more powerful than the series. As we move on to DLC, we find out that Joker, is feetless. No, I'm not kidding. He just runs around with dramatic colors and exquisite music and fails to kill anyone, apart from the poor smuck he most likely stole the smash invitation from. Also, according to Persona Wiki Arson is only Joker's imaginary friend, so he most likely scales to lonely beta cuck level. I mean he's got a knife and a gun. Patrick has a fucking gun and we are not parading him around as a high tier either. So no. I guess he could use the getaway one to run people over, but traffic accident level is not impressive. Finally, some good feats. Link, who again, 
Khan has the omnipotent, has trouble with random spirit battles, but a hero comes to save his damsel ass, one shotting them, so he's default above Link. Hero also appears in Shounen cartoon based on Japanese mango, Dragon Ball Super, proving that Smash scales above high tiers from that show, as well as every connected franchise it has ever had contact with, which includes Shounen Cinematic Universe. Fallout 3 confirmed. Hero is though shown to be below Ganondorf's No Limits fallacy and needs his three cousins to bail him out, so who knows if each has three times multiplier. Still he scales above Pokemon. All of the Fatal Fairy characters are proven to be too weak to even defeat a letter. So Terry, who scales to them all, probably isn't even list worthy. He can share a room with Joker, but probably is below gun level, considering how fighting game characters with guns are always most OP. By the way, you may have noticed that a very important character from the Fatal Fury series was not included. Yes, Mai Shiranui. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is for good boys and girls of many different ages, so we decided not to feature her. Yet you allowed Bayonetta to get in? Moving along, the toxic fandom themselves, Byleth gets his shit pushed in so hard by generic evil dude, that he joins Smash. Sakurai's pity showing all over the trailer. So joining Smash consumes even the darkness itself. Yeah bro we know. So the Hogwarts student takes to arms. But it's unfortunately revealed that he scales below anime swordmen level. Are you prepared to die? Huh? I thought as much. <laughs> LOL. Just kidding. She uses the power of diversity to get back into the game. Oh. Also, Fire Emblem characters being able to fly seems to be very consistent now. Scaling off of by let the all the Fire Emblem characters scale above mid-tier characters, because they have swords. Too many swordsmen are there? Yes. Also Fire Emblem God tiers like Super Saiyan Blue Math's singing voice should easily scale above most of Smash characters. That one franchise full of Monkey D. Luffy imitators. Franchise full of Rayman. Full of Springman. Stretchy boys and girls also fail to get into game in same vein as the Fatal Fairy characters, also scaling them below joining Smash. However, Min Min is able to use her doodle arms to outstretch all the fodder people in arms, meaning her final Smash attack actually makes her weaker by utilizing them. Her noodles are unable to sate the hunger of Kirby, but completely overpower Captain Falcon, who earlier beat the crap out of Lucina, which should mean that Min Min's noodles are more powerful than Fire Emblem characters. Finally, the man, the myth, the meme, and the king of one shot himself, Sephiroth enters the fray in the most comic accurate trailer I've seen to date. Seemingly almost made for specifically to mock my top 10 strongest canon smash characters video by including every character from it, aside from Kirby of course, jobbing to Galim, whom Sephiroth promptly omay, wah, Mao Shindarus. Proving that everything is a lie, and that the people who think that Sephiroth can't beat the Omni King Zeno are part of the problem. The trailer also showcases him cutting entire stages in half, which is hazard level, as well as his accuracy being so bad that he can't even hit Mario's stubby plumber body with his sword. And then Cloud fucks him up. Proving that Final Fantasy scales way past Smash as a wait what what the hell is going on? Cloud over Sephi. Why? How? Looking back to it, he has defeated him canonically at least 6 times, so it is canon that he lost. Like he lost to Spike in the final episode of Cowboy Bebop, and then Cloud is stated to be weakest person ever, by the director of FF7 himself. So everyone in Smash is weaker than literally the weakest human being. Smash scales below depression. And now that I think about it, Galim defeats everybody. Cloud is part of the everybody. And Sephiroth defeats Galim. But then Cloud defeats Sephiroth like 6 times. And, and Galleon defeats Cloud. How is this happening we were so close. To top all that off, anime wife has come in and beat him up for a bit too. And then are depicted to be equal to Manado boy. The same Manado boy that Galleon also defeated. I don't. What? How? Does not compute. It's all over. My beautiful tier list is ruined. It was also consistent before the anime showed up. This fucking thing makes no sense. Or maybe it does. 
Maybe this all has been building up to the last Wu DLC characters yet to come, and all in Sakurai San's master plan will be revealed. Whoever it is that they choose as the last DLC fighters, I'm sure that new Metis will be redefined and rebooted, after all. All I know is that Kirby is number one. Thank you for watching this meaningful, informative, totally legit not shitting you at all video. I sincerely hope you enjoyed it, it took me great deal of time to even get around making this. Tune in next time for more intellectual content, so please, help a guy out. Subscribe, like, comment, and donate to Patreon. If you get me 10,000 subscribers in next few months, I'll summon an owl to god. That'll be the channel goal from now on. I'm Marionic90 and I'll see you around.